Hey there viewers and welcome back to the South Main Auto Channel. If you're new here, welcome to our channel. A lot of you guys probably recognize this 03 Chevrolet S10 here. It's got a big 4.3 liter, it's four wheel drive and we just had it in another video a bit ago. And this one came in and it had that transfer case problem and had problems with the uh, four wheel drive actuator and the front axle and a whole host of other things and Sadly enough, I was not able to record the process of the transfer case and replacing that just because there was such another, you know, such an abundant workload to do on it. Um, I didn't do the whole vehicle myself. Uh, the guy that works for me, I had him um, do, you know, the majority of it. Um, I came in today to finish it up. Today's Saturday. Nobody likes working on Saturdays. But the other thing is, I was going to tear the transfer case apart for you too. And I was thinking, wow, well, we'll, we'll, we'll compromise with that. We'll settle on that. We'll show you the um, uh, show you the guts in the transfer case and you know what happened. And like an idiot, I totally forgot that transfer case has a core on it. So I don't want to lose my core because that's enough core value that you know I don't want to just throw it away for the sake of demonstration. So we'll have to wait until we get one in. I mean, these Chevy trucks, you know, they break fast enough that I'm sure we'll certainly get another one in where we actually just go through and and uh, you know rebuild the transfer case or repair it um, we get a lot of these in not this particular transfer case but like in the half tons where the oil pump will actually you know cheddar a hole through the back case uh, so if we get one of those in i promise you the next time we uh, rebuild the transfer case uh, or replace one there we'll show you how to do that so the compromise is now i'm going to take it down uh you can see uh, we got shiny new control arm on there the upper control arms uh, we're almost rotted through. <laughs> They're in pretty rough shape. Uh, ball joint was bad in the top. Um, he wanted some front brakes put on it, so we've done that. And uh, so it needs a wheel alignment now. And a lot of you guys have, you know, kind of, uh, you know, let me know what you want that you've wanted to see a, a wheel alignment video. Uh, you know, down at my dad's shop, or I guess at my brother's shop. My brother owns it now. Uh, so we're gonna sneak down there. They're not open today. Uh, so we'll see if we can't uh, can't get in there and use uh, use this alignment equipment and get this thing lined up. Being that I couldn't show you the other process, this is the compromise. So hope you enjoy it. I probably could have picked a better uh, test subject to do a wheel alignment on, but this one here is going to give us our full range of alignability. How do you like that word? Uh, basically, um, because we had to replace this upper control arm. The adjustments are made here. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this when I'm doing the actual alignment, but there on the upper control arm, there's actually cam bolts. You can see the, you know, the half moon or, you know, egg shaped piece there. Well, I guess it's circular, but the hole in it's offset. Um, it's got one on the rear and it also has, you know, one up here too, right next to the crusty brake line. <laughs> so what you have to do or what that allows you to do, it allows you to adjust the control arm you know, with those cams, kind of, you can either move the, you know, move, you know, move both cams at the same time to move this whole control arm out to adjust your camera angle, or you can move, uh, you know, one individually to, you know, to get that upper ball joint, you know, uh, you know, positive or negative uh, for your caster angle. And down here on our tie rod ending, see, I got a couple new new bolts on this adjuster sleeve. Uh, this this thing's pretty old, pretty rusty. Um, you know, you can see the threads are pretty much don't exist but you know I've sprayed her down with some good old Panther P I got that moving you know of course you know the cam bolts uh, move we had to do the same thing on the other side so over here on this side you know we got the tie rod end freed up uh, that'll help us when we go uh, to do the alignment and uh, over here we had to actually put in some new cam bolts and get kind of a kind of a glimpse of those babies uh, these ones the bushings and control arm was so bad on this side um, that it actually we actually had to just you know cut them out with the torch so blaze them out of there with the torch a lot of you were probably wondering why that shock looks a little older and a little crustier and this one over here is nice and bright and shiny well the darndest thing happened when we uh, had to take this shock out on this side we had to take the shock out to get the uh, to get the cam bolts out just because that's how you have to do it when we did that the stinking shock blew apart yeah, I took and uh, took the uh, you know took the top bolt out of it, and I see the shock you know just kind of pop up like it had some tension on it, and you know I mean they're gas charged shocks, so not uncommon. I pulled that lower bolt out, 
went to pull the shock out. That's what it did. Came out in two pieces. Uh, looks like I don't know if it just uh, you know just came unscrewed or what the story was, but anyhow, it's just an old winter beater truck, so we just threw one shock on it to match you know to match the other one and ship it down the road. Need some other work to it, but uh, yeah, couldn't believe that first time I ever seen one just unhooking it. And you know, of course, oil went everywhere, so it was a mess. So hopefully that answers a couple questions, and I guess that's a, enough on that. And yes, I know this truck is old and rusty, and you know, where do you end? Uh, you know, as far as you know, all new tie rod ends and ball joints, how your arm, pitman arm, and adjuster sleeves. And, you got to get realistic at some point, you know, I mean, this is the guy's winter truck and he just wants four wheel drive, which he has now because we fixed all that. And, uh, you know, wanted the front end so it wasn't gonna, you know, just fall right out from underneath it and wanted brakes. So he's got that. And now we're just gonna go down and get our alignment done. Well, here we are, uh, we made it down. Got the, pulled the truck in from their uh, alignment rack. We'll get that all set up and this is, uh, my brother's shop, I guess, you know, it used to be my dad's shop, but he bought it off him last year. So I just, you know, a lot of my videos you hear me refer to, you know, going down to my dad's shop, but it's kind of hard to, you know, get that out of your mind. But yeah, my brother uh, has this now. And, um, this is, uh, you know, a shop they work in. And um, this is where my dad, uh, he built the shop after uh, he moved out of my shop back in 98 or 99 or so. And then my shop sat vacant or SMA as you know it. So this is this is their shop. Quite a bit, uh, you know, quite a bit larger. It's my dad down there working on his lawnmower. He's always fiddling on something, one of his Kubotas or tractor, or something. He's always doing something. But anyhow, let's get started on this beast. had to get the truck rolled ahead, get it setting on these uh, turntables. And now we'll put the uh, alignment heads on there so we can take a measurement. So we've got all the uh, cordless heads set up on there on both sides. You can see they just uh, clamp onto the wheels. You probably see me cranking them on. And actually, the setting that that these are on this this style clamp that they got them flipped around to. Whoever used it last is for uh, actually for going around a hubcap. Uh, but you know, as long as they're retained on the wheel, they'll be totally fine. And those actually transmit back and forth to that beam up there, that little T-shaped. That little guy right there is actually going to talk to the heads that we just put on the wheels cordlessly. So that's pretty cool. So this is a John Bean machine. We just need to come over and enter the vehicle information. It's a 03 S10 four wheel drive except ZQ8 or Z87. We got to look and see what the uh, RPO code is. Now, oh, what do we got here? Looks like we've got a ZQ3 and a Z85, so we are except. So that must be for the uh, Hossie off road package. So we'll do except ZQ8 and Z87. So here it tells us once the tank full, you know, no weight in the front end of the vehicle which really doesn't matter on this. It gives us all of our specs, uh, our preferred specs for caster camber, SAI, which isn't uh, measurable on this, or they don't give a spec for it, individual toe, our total toe, and then our rear specs, which the rear is not adjustable on this. So now we've got that in. Now you can see the, um, it's looking for all of the heads and currently it can only read the rear two so what we need to do is 
move this boom, uh, this boom down because uh, it's all the way up at its max height so it can actually uh, communicate with the heads. As you can see here, it's indicated it wants us to roll the truck backwards. And actually that's exactly what we're gonna do, is we're just gonna actually take the truck, roll it backwards on a lift, uh, the machine's gonna calibrate, it'll, it'll beep at us and we'll roll it ahead, and that's gonna gain all its primary measurements, the tow measurements and camber, and then to get the uh, caster measurement, we're actually gonna have to do a caster sweep uh, with the steering wheel, so it can actually measure that angle, but uh, this will compensate for, you know, Lateral run out in the wheels and you know axle offset. It'll give us all of our measurements we're we're looking for. All right, so that was a good a good tone so now we can come over and we can see uh, we can see our measurements here we'll go right on to the next screen wants us to turn the steering wheel a little bit so we'll do that get the pins out of our turntables here Now that we've done that, all the gray indicates, you know, a non-adjustable factor. So what we're looking at here, as indicated by the little arrow cars, are we're looking at our two rear wheels. And we can see that the rear axle, you know, based on this is, is not perfect. Um, you know, that we've got a little bit of a, you know, perhaps a, you know, a bent axle tube or um, more than likely the whole axle is in a little bit cockeyed. We can tell by the center line of our vehicle and you know that we've got you know positive toe on this side negative toe on this side so that would indicate that our rear axle is in a little bit cockeyed you know no big deal not an adjustable factor or easily adjustable factor but it's really not something we're worried about on this uh this old s10 all right now we got to straighten up our steering wheel and get that locked um and here's our our front measurements i thought it was going to be pretty close because uh, the truck actually drove pretty decent on the way down uh, so our top readings, these are our caster readings, our camber, and our individual tow. Um, and then this here is our, our total tow reading here in the middle. Um, I mean, realistically our, our camber is within spec, but we're going to adjust it for the, for the sake of adjusting it. Plus we also got to get a caster, uh, caster sweep yet, so we'll go ahead and do that. Uh, let's see, it's been a while since I've come up here and measure. Uh, caster and SAA measurements. All right, let's go ahead and do that. So I took and locked the uh, brake pedal so the truck won't rotate and the front wheels won't rotate. What we're gonna take as indicated here, we're gonna actually turn the wheel as the uh, computer takes our measurements. us to uh, rotate our wheel to the to the right and at this point like I said it's measuring the uh, caster angle right, we're gonna set our wheel back to center right there now we're gonna take and lock our wheel we've got our steering wheel lock on we got our brake pedal depressed we'll just leave it neutral Take and uh, hop down and go see what our measurements are. It should pop up for us. Get my head out of the way. All right, there we go. So we can see our caster angles off here on the left wheel. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and start on that. And I explained back when we were at uh, at the shop how we're going to do that using those cam bolts. So the neat feature about this program. Now these are all live measurement screens. We could essentially just start making adjustments, uh, but we can kind of utilize the tool here. It actually has a con uh, control arm adjustment section. 
So this here shows us adjusting our upper control arm on the right side of the vehicle. This is our front cam and our rear cam and actually tells us which way to turn the individual cams. Um, but what we want to do is we want to do this in an elevated position. So we're going to push the jack button. It's telling us to raise the wheel. It's going to retain our measurement for us. And then uh, we can make our adjustments with it elevated. should be high enough so I just got it picked on the lower control arms and I guess it's fair to mention you know before you do any alignment um, everything has to be tight you know ball joints, tire out ends, idler arm, pitman arm, you can't have any play in any of it. Doesn't have to be new it just has to be tight and um, we're holding this on the lower control arms just like if the vehicle's riding down the road because in this case when we loosen them upper control arms when we retighten the bushings we want them in the actual ride height position. Now that we got that jacked up, we'll hit OK. You can see it retained our measurement, so now we'll start uh, making some adjustments. Working in a new location always proposes new uh, video problems. I don't know how to show you guys the screen and what I'm doing at the same time, so I guess I'll kind of start and move some things around. But I got my two 18 millimeter wrenches. This is where it gets kind of tricky because I've got to be able to reach up over you know, down inside on these cam bolts. I gotta move stuff, not hit the head, and not get in the way of the beam, so I can see my live adjustment on the screen. Um, looks like it wants us just to move our front, you know, cam bolt out, uh, but, you know, experience tells me, you know, when you move one, you know, it's gonna kinda get reproduced onto the other one, so we're gonna end up moving them both, but uh, we're gonna get started. Moving this cam, you can see that upper, upper half of the screen there. It's starting to move, letting us know we're going in the right direction. And there we go. We got that right on the money. I'll take a snug up that to jam up a little bit. And even though the other cam is saying it's it's in the green. What I'm going to do is just tweak it just a little bit more, try to get it as close to center as possible. And then we're going to move on to the other side. So that one there wants it to come out just a smidge too. Let's see if we can rotate that just a little bit. We got the uh, cam bolts all tightened back down. We're just going to go ahead and jump on the other side, and do the same exact thing. So just let her know that we're going to the other side. So now we can tell we're on the left side. We're on the upper control arm, front cam, rear cam. Those are the adjustments we're going to make. Bring that one in, and that one out. See, we got that side done. Now we got to take and uh, let the jack down, give it a couple bounces, and recheck our measurements. It's got to be one of the most lame -o SMA videos out there. Really, not much to do when you're doing alignment. It's kind of just the same thing every day. I guess I just I can never be an alignment technician. My my alignments are kind of boring. Just you know, it's always the same, same measurements you're dealing with. Just whether it's front or back, or you know, just set camber, caster, caster camber, toe, 
ship it, bring in the next one. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I guess maybe the only, I don't really know any fun part about it. <laughs> So this here is where we ended up. We can see our desired uh, caster on the left side is 2.8. We ended up at 2.8. Our camber is zero. Uh, our desired caster on the right side is 3.3. It's a little bit more positive on the right side and a lot of vehicles are like that uh, because your caster angle, it's gonna pull to the side that's more negative. Uh, so this vehicle on something that's perfectly flat pavement is gonna pull to the left naturally uh, because the left side is more negative and they do that to fight road crown I assume um, but at any rate the uh, camera on this side is you know within one tenth of one degree so if you think about this as a you know a 360 degree circle um, or a circle divided into 360 feet, 360 individual little pieces were one tenth of one little piece off so uh, that's actually perfect uh, so now all we've got to do is we're going to go through and set our toe measure our toe uh, individually and that's it So we gotta try to turn this adjuster sleeve. I sprayed them all down pretty good. Let's see if we can't, uh, can't hook in there. The general rule is whenever you're doing alignment, you gotta turn the adjuster sleeve whatever way you think it needs to go. It's the opposite. Actually, <laughs> let me just try something. Take my own advice. Ah, I had it right the first time. See, we've got that toe set. Zoom back out. That was our left side. Or right, come over here to the right side. We'll zoom in on that. It's a little easier to see when I'm making the adjustments. All right, so let's make the adjustments here on this right side. That kind of tweaked around when I need it. A little bit. So there is our end result. We should probably take give the vehicle a bounce here, make sure everything's settled. Good. You take a look after bouncing it. Everything stayed real nice, so it's all within specs. You know, I'm not going to worry about a, you know, hundredth or five hundredths of a degree there. You know, it's no big deal really. First pothole, no, it's going to look the same anyways, but. It's the best that we can do. We can take and pop back here at the rear end. We can see the rear end uh, specs there, like I showed you before. And there's our front. So that's it. Pretty, uh, pretty straightforward, really. Well, that's really all there is to it, viewers. Not much to an alignment, really. I know quite a few of you guys requested that you wanted to see it. And of course you wanted to see, you know, because I always mention, well, I gotta run down to my dad's shop and do, a, do an alignment. 
uh, you know, whenever I change, you know, whatever it is, ball joint, control arms, whatever, you know, whatever the case may be, well, this is pretty much what I do each time I come down here, you know, whatever factors are adjustable on the car, um, usually I free them up while it's at the shop, you know, because a, a vehicle that does a, um, you know, requires a four-wheel alignment, requires a lot more adjustments in the rear. Um, you know, maybe we could do one of those someday, but really it's the same same process. You know, you bring it in, you take your measurements, you make your little adjustments, get it all within factory specs, and you know, ship it down the road. Nothing real custom or difficult about it. I mean, it's just all all procedure and and you know, knowing your software and the benefits that it has, uh, because certainly doing that, you know, control arm adjustments, you know, the software, yeah, it totally makes it easy. You know, the old Hunter machine that we had. That was a lot different. That was more, you know, pick it up, know what you're doing, you know, make some adjustments, tweak it. I mean, this stuff makes it just kind of, you know, no-brainer work. Um, it just pretty much, you know, guides you right through it, and uh, that's that. So I'm just going to make sure the steering wheel's straight. That should be. Had it locked. Double-check that, and we'll take this baby for a zip down the road. Should drive straight. Shouldn't pull. Steering wheel should be straight. All right. Well, we got all of our. Uh, all of our alignment stuff taken care of. Say goodbye to my dad. Whoa, this baby's hussy. I'll take her for a little shake. That's the kind of crap they work on every day. I did that for enough years, no way. blustery day so it's hard to hard to tell with the with the wind blowing we should have a little bit of drift to the right with the uh, road crown so no hands on the wheel you can see eventually we start to drift off to the right there but our steering wheel is good and straight we don't have any kind of uh, obnoxious pull what I like to do is if it's safe straddle the yellow line and that's gonna you know that's gonna let you know if you have a you know, real pull or not, or, you know, hop over in the other lane, go head on into traffic, and should, you know, drift you off a little bit to the left with that road crown, but th this one feels really good. All right, viewers, there you go. That's an alignment. <laughs> That's what I do when I go to do an alignment. So hopefully you understand a little bit uh, better about maybe what happens to your car when you take it to the alignment shop to get lined up. And now, each car is a little bit different. This one had a fully adjustable front end, caster camber and tow. Uh, some cars don't. Some vehicles uh, are camber and, and tow only. Some require all different ways to adjust them. Everything from you know drilling out strut plates and moving them and, and re-welding them to you know buying aftermarket cam bolts for your struts to you know you name it. You know it's all it's all the same, but it's all different as far as the way the adjustments are made. Um, and uh, you know vehicles that have independent rear suspension are typically adjustable in the rear also in which case we would have done the rear camber and then the rear toe and then we would have moved on to the front uh, because everything that's in the rear is reflected in the front you know if you're center lining your vehicles off uh, you know more than you know probably you know three tenths of a degree or so and you're, if you set your wheel straight in the front, it's probably going to be a little bit cockeyed. You know, the car's going to dog track a little. But uh, we did a good enough job on that for, for what the truck is, you know, for the guy's winter truck. And he's happy his four drives working now, I'm sure. And that's it. So hope you understand. Hope you like to watch and a little different than what we normally do. But what are you going to do? So check us out on Facebook if you haven't. Consider subscribing to our channel, too, if you haven't done that yet. If you want to stay up to date with our latest publications, you can find us on Google+, Plus if you want to connect with us socially there. And just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Assuming you have an alignment machine. Thanks for watching.